Cynthia here. Welcome back to the homestead on this beautiful Thursday morning. We are on week two for our egg check. Last Thursday, we went over the development of a chicken embryo from days one through seven. And today we're gonna be going over days seven through 14, which is a period of rapid growth and development for these little babies. Now, while I get these out and ready to go in the bathroom with the lights off and my egg candler, here is some information about how they've been developing in their eggs over the last seven days. By day eight, the chick's eyes now have color to them. His beak's upper and lower parts, as well as his wings and legs are defined and distinct, and his ear canal opens. Day nine brings the appearance of claws, and his first feather follicles begin to develop. On day 10, the nostrils are now developed, and we can see some growth of eyelids. His limbs are growing longer and begin to be covered in feather follicles. Lastly, we see the appearance of the egg tooth or pipping tooth, which he will use to crack the shell during hatching. By day 12, feather follicles appear on the head and around the ears and eyes, and the eyelids cover nearly the whole eye. Finally, on day 13, we can see the development of the chick's claws on his feet, as well as his leg scales, and on day 14, where we now are, a down of feathers covers nearly his whole body and is growing rapidly. I hope you all found that very interesting. I know I find the science and the development fascinating, watching all the different stages of development of the embryos within the egg. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the lights now and double check on our babies. We are looking for duds, embryos that have stopped developing, which there were a couple here that we were somewhat concerned about last week, but we'll know for sure on them this week. As I said in last week's video, these eggs came all the way from Florida and when they were shipped, they were shipped at the same time as the polar vortex that hit a while back. So they were delayed in shipping. So if most of these eggs are still good and we have happy, healthy babies in here, I will be so excited. I hope we haven't lost too many. Lights out, flashlights on. Let's take a look at some babies. The first thing I'm gonna be doing here is just a quick candle over the top of all the eggs looking for duds, and then I will pull out any that are duds and some examples of really good development to share with you guys. And if we're lucky, we'll even see some movement this week. Kind of like a little chick ultrasound. Okay, it does look like we have a couple of duds in here. Let me show you. As you can see, this egg does not have much development in it. It has not changed since last week. And another thing that you'll notice is this red line, this streak across the shell. That is what we call the red ring. It will go in a bit of a ring shape all the way around, not in like a perfect circle. It can be on the diagonal like this. And what this indicates is that at the very first couple of days of development, this chick had something wrong with it that made it not compatible with life. So unfortunately, this is a loss. It would seem that our speckled egg, the ones that are so incredibly difficult to see development in to begin with, it was the second one that I was concerned about last week. Also, unfortunately, we are not seeing any development. This is the last egg that I found that it's a dud I was worried about. One thing that you might notice about this egg that is different from all the others is how thin the shell is. You see that scratching and it's almost like a scoring mark around the egg. That's where the shell is quite thin. When you see this on an egg that you're candling, it's a fairly good indicator that the egg is not quite right and there's some structural problems here. This allows for things like bacteria to easily enter the shell in comparison to the thicker parts of the shell. This is another reason why you don't want to scrub, clean, or wash your eggs vigorously before you put them in because that can damage the shell. But you can see with this one, let's see if I can get that there was some development here that unfortunately quit. So that means we currently have 20 out of the 24 eggs that I purchased and put in the incubator that are still viable, which is actually quite great. Shipped eggs, like I said last week, have a tendency to get scrambled by the post office, even when they're super gentle. It's kind of a journey. And these guys came across country and their shipment was delayed because of the polar vortex. So honestly, I'm not mad at this level of development. Now that we're past the little bit of sadness of losing a few eggs, let me show you some really great examples of some happy thriving babies. 
You see that darkest spot right there in the middle? That's a baby. If you look closely, you can watch it move. This is so incredibly cool, isn't it? It's just like, I don't know, maybe I'm a dork. Maybe I get way too excited about husbandry, but I think it's super cool. It's like a little cheeky ultrasound. Where you going, little baby? You're making me chase you. It says, excuse me, I was trying to nap, and here you come with this bright, stinky light. Go ahead and put him back. The reason why I chose that egg is because it has a white shell. White shelled eggs are by far the easiest eggs to take a look at. The hardest ones are the speckled one, like I showed you earlier. It was so difficult to get a clear look through the egg. And then the green ones, the green ones are so difficult. Let me show you the difference here of what it's like to candle a green egg. Uh, <laughs> look at that. You can hardly see a thing. Oh, but look, we got somebody who's very active. Hello, little baby. Booping around in there and I'm like, hey, who turned on the lights? I was sleeping. Here is a dark brown speckled egg. And yeah, <laughs> it's really hard to see anything. But this is what that speckled egg should have looked like if it had made it. So now that we're 14 days into incubation, our next big event coming up is lockdown day. Lockdown is day 18. This is when you lay in wait for the chicks to begin to hatch. You take the incubator off its rocking cradle or stop rotating your eggs if you don't have a rocking cradle like I do or an auto rocker. You bump up the humidity and you wait patiently for day 21 for hatch day to begin. I will likely put up a video of lockdown so I can show you guys my lockdown procedure as we go through these various stages of incubation. And then I'm gonna try my darndest to go live for the hatch. So definitely stay tuned, hit the notification bell so that you can be updated when we go live for hatch day. March 17th is going to be day 21 for these eggs and hopefully our hatch day. I will be posting on my social media plate pages like Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, Facebook, and all that good stuff. So make sure you're following us there as well so that you can be updated when the hatch and pipping and everything truly begins. See you on Sunday.